What did Einstein want to discover? Loud, loud. No, about ten times louder. We, no, he okay. He wanted to find out how far away something will diffuse as a function of time. How far away can you expect to find something by diffusion as time goes on? So look, here you got a molecule where my nose is, it starts to diffuse, it does a random walk, and he's asking, start here, okay, start there, at time zero, and it does a random walk, and after time, what, delta t, what does delta mean, change? So delta t just means the elapsed time. Let's say it ends up there, this distance x, that's what he wants to know. And he wants to know the average distance x that you can expect to find the particle, okay? So, he used, uh, I don't know how much he used experiments, he was more of a theoretical <laughs> physicist. He may have derived this from first principles, actually. And he, uh, he wa this was part of why he won a Nobel Prize. But anyway, here's the equation that he came up with. X, the distance away, if you square it and take the average value, obviously, it's obvious that you have to take average values here, is equal to 2 times good old D, see, there's the diffusion coefficient, times delta T. So as time goes up, What's going to happen to the square of the average of the distance? It's going to go up. And as time goes down, this goes down, obviously. So the longer the time, the further away you can expect to find the particle. Okay, these are all defined for you here. Now, it's kind of hard to visualize what's going on with this equation. So let's do this. Let's solve this for x and get x by itself, see here, as a function of time. And then we can interpret this. So what we're going to do is ignore the average sign. Ignore the average sign. You can, you can do that. Just as long as you remember that this is really talking about averages. So we have x squared equals what? 2d delta t. Solve for x. So take what? The square root of both sides. So this becomes x equals the plus or minus square root of 2d delta t. We're going to keep the minus one. Does it make sense to have a minus a negative number? No. It doesn't make sense. These are all positive distances from the start. So negative numbers make no sense, so throw out the negative one. And you just got x is the positive square root of 2d delta t. So now plot x as a function of time, elapsed time. Here it is, x as a function of delta t. x is the dependent variable, delta t is the independent variable. Looks like this. Now, what's this equation saying? It's saying that over short times, things, can, uh, things move away fast. But over longer and longer times, they move away, you could say, slower and slower. They're always moving away, yes. This is a monotonic function. It's always going up. But say this, over a short time, it moves away fast. See, the slope is big there. But over longer and longer times, it moves away slower and slower. 
So what would this look like if you do it with a kinesthetic, which is what you should do when you study? Let's do it. Starts at your nose. Represent the distance you find it by a sphere, right? A sphere that's expanding in any direction. So what it's saying is that it goes like this. Initially, it goes fast, and then it goes slower and slower. Do it again. Fast, and then slower and slower and slower like that. Now, this is a very powerful equation because we can use this to calculate diffusion coefficients. What do you have to measure? The average distance that it moved away, x. Keep track of the time, delta t. And you can solve for d. You can calculate a diffusion coefficient. Or if you know the diffusion coefficient and you know the distance it diffuses, if you know a distance that it's going to diffuse, you can calculate the time it takes to do it. Or if you know the time it takes to do it and you know the diffusion coefficient, you can travel, you can calculate how far it'll diffuse. You can solve for x. Very powerful equation. So we're going to apply this now to those chemicals. Okay, let's first do some interesting problems. There's three problems here, one, two, and three. Okay, the first problem is talking about a membrane. <coughs> so here's a membrane, water loving heads, oily tails. Told you that small molecules like water can diffuse through membranes. See the random walk there in green? And if you have a membrane and there's a molecule whose diffusion coefficient is 10 to the minus 8, hey, what are the units of a diffusion coefficient? Centimeters squared per second. Does that make intuitive sense? Yeah. Uh, sort of. Okay, a little bit. Jessica, you're just coming in there. Okay. We're calculating diffusion coefficients using Einstein's equation right here. Okay, if you have a molecule diffusing across a membrane, the material in the membrane is oily. Okay, these uh, oily tails vibrating. If you could reach inside a membrane and feel them with your fingers, they'd feel probably about the consistency of motor oil that you put in your car. And so the diffusion coefficient is 10 to the minus 8, right here, uh, centimeters squared per second. Oh, I was talking about the intuitive meaning of that. What's centimeters squared? That's an area, right, per second. So you can kind of think of a diffusion coefficient as reflecting how many square centimeters it increases by per second. Got it? Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, how come it's not cubic centimeters? Because his equation is really in three dimensions. And to be honest, I'm not sure why it's not in three dimensions. That's just the way the units work out. They have to be this, because this is time, seconds, this is distance in centimeters squared, and so that has to be centimeters squared per second. So anyway, I'm trying to give you at least a little bit of a way to think of those units intuitively. But if some small molecule has a diffusion coefficient of 10 to the minus 8 centimeters squared per second, how long would it take to diffuse across that membrane? And the membrane is how big? 100 angstroms or which is the same as 10 to the minus 6 uh, centimeters. Okay, now I'll solve this one for you. So watch, don't write anything. In fact, come up, come up here, quick, uh, up close, so you can't write anything. <laughs> quick, 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 you can do it. Put some energy in. Okay, we want to know what, how long. So solve for delta, delta T. T. And delta T is going to be, what, x squared over, here look, 
just uh, delta t is going to be equal to what? x squared over 2d. Okay, what's x in the problem? The distance across the membrane, 10 to the minus 6 centimeters. Oh, 2 times d, d is 10 to the minus 8 centimeters squared per second. Okay, you plug everything in. Now do the arithmetic. 10 to the minus 6 squared is 10 to the minus 12. <coughs> negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Put the 1 in here. And this is 2 times 10 to the minus 8 still. Now deal with the mantises. 1 over 2 is 0.5. And 10 to the minus 12 or 10 to the minus 8. What do you do? Take the top exponent minus the bottom. So negative 12 minus a minus 8 is minus 12 plus 8, which equals minus 4. Put this in strict scientific notation. The mantissa, ha <clears throat> the mantissa has to be a number between 1 and 10. So you've got to multiply this by 10. If you multiply this by 10, you have to divide by 10 there to undo the damage that you just did. So take that down by 1. So it's 5 times 10 to the minus 5th second. Make sense? Yes. How fast is that? What's 10 to the minus 5th of a second? It's 100,000th of a second. And you have 5 of them. So that's 500,000th of a second. So that molecule gets across the membrane rather fast. Okay, I'm going to give you about two minutes to write that one down right there. Write it down on that page, right on that page. Exactly like this, step by step. Write fast. <coughs> Better yet, do it yourself. You'll have to do this on the final, at last final at the end of the semester. Say that. There's a practice lab final at the end of the lab manual. Say that. With answers. Some really cool a leaf. It's kind of weird, mutated. What's this again? A, a leaf? leaf? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I can't uh, see. That is weird. Okay, you got that written down? Yeah. No. Now, let's do the next problem. Put your pencils down and point at me. You can look at this later if you didn't get it written. <clears throat> There's a bacteria that lives in salty lakes that has embedded in its membrane a protein that absorbs light, changes its shape, pumps protons across the membrane, generates a gradient like I talked about, and then as those protons come ramming back across the membrane, they release energy and power the cell. Okay, so it's a, pro it's a bacteria that can use the energy of sunlight to, for energy. It's not a photosynthetic organism, it just uses that protein in that way. Do a kinesthetic. Protein in the membrane of the bacteria. Light hits it. Violent shape change. Rams protons across the membrane. And then they go slamming back down their gradient and it releases energy and powers the cell. Protein is an opsin. Remember the opsin I taught you about in our retina? Seven pass transmembrane protein with 11 cis retinal in the middle. 
It's almost the same.